questions. Back to the phones. Pete, you're live on America Armed and Free with Commander Richard Marchenko and Charles Heller. Your question for him. Mr. Marchenko, it's a real honor to be able to ask you a question. I've got two real quick questions, and I'll take the answers off the air. Um, okay. Back during Red Cell, did you ever go to Tucson? And if so, what was the result? And then my second question is, what's your opinion on the debate between the AK-47 and the M-16? Well, the first one, uh, I, I went to Tucson and... Uh, uh, Places are places around Tucson. Went down to Machuca. Went down to the border. Uh, it, it's like most of our cities in a free society. Uh, I think going uh, going to Davis Moffin and, and taking picking litter out of there would have been fun. Uh, everybody could build their own plane uh, out of the dump out there. Uh, on the AK-47, yeah, we we'll, we'll call that a mark, sir. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> on the AK-47 versus the M16. Uh, uh, one, if you can, you know, if you're working independently behind the lines. Uh, it's nice to have the lighter load, uh, but most you know you don't have that five five six around the world. So carrying the AK forty seven logistically is you get something there. And, and frankly, I'm a big boy, and I can carry that extra weight. And I like that uh, <laughs> as it goes by you versus that. <laughs> and uh, you know the the, the two two three five five six does a nice tumble and tears you up on the inside. But uh, I, I like that knockdown power of, of the uh, seven six two uh, that comes out of that AK. And it's so it's great in the field. I mean, you you can get it muddy. You, you, it, it's got great tolerances. So functionally, I guess a, uh, I would go that internationally, the AK-47 has more functional capability. Uh, the M16, uh, uh, if you got a <coughs> logistics train that goes with you, it's fine. I guess that the the uh, AK must have uh, John Moses Browning envy in the way it functions. Well, the, the, the interesting, uh, I mean, I, I actually met Karishnikov in St. Petersburg. Oh, did you? He's, 80, I think, 82 years old and, and so feisty old general. I mean, you know, he, I, I went to the, uh, the their museum there, and, and he, he really uh, uh, put out a, a family of weapons uh, you know, through the course of his time. Yeah, as they used to say, Kalashnikov, we are the world. Well, he did his part, that's for damn sure. One of the scenarios you sent me in support, in some support literature uh, off the air, talks about something that uh, when I uh, first observed it, when I observed it my, myself firsthand last year, struck me as a tremendous terrorism target, and I'm specifically referring to Boston Harbor. Yeah. When you look at the layout of downtown Boston, the harbor goes right into it. On top of that, there's a liquefied petroleum terminal very close by. How likely is it that terrorists have figured that out, and what could be done to stop an attack that's in progress? Well, it's an open press, and, and you can't stop it in progress. Most of our detection equipment says they're coming. There they are.